Hello there. Today we're going to talk about game loops. I'm going to tell you what a game loop is. I'm going to tell you why they're structured the way they are. And then we're also going to build a really simple one at the end. So first, let's look at the structure of a game loop. A game loop is what's responsible for processing the user's input or the player's input, updating the game state, whatever data is needed to be updating inside the game, and then drawing the result of the game to the screen. So from the player's perspective, we interact with it in step one. The game does whatever it needs to do in step two and then draws the game to step three so that we can see it. And then it repeats over and over again, this cycle is running. So I want you to imagine that you're baking a shepherd's pie. You've got all your lovely ingredients. You've got your minced lamb, carrots, potato, and whatever else you want to put in there. Okay, and you've got all these ingredients and then you put them together into the pastry and you put it in the oven and you leave it in there for 30 40 minutes maybe longer okay that's the update so this is the input this is the update where we can't really interact with it we just have to wait for the oven to do its thing for all the chemical reactions to happen and to create that beautiful flavor and then at the end we get something like this beautiful lovely looking shepherd's pie that's the render step so let's have a look at how we might implement one of these ourselves. All right, so here we have a really simple SDL program. If you're not familiar with SDL, it's a library that helps you do rendering, input, and some other things, including sound, if you use the, the mixer add-on. But don't worry about all of that. We're just gonna have a look at the game loop. So we've got a few lines here, which is just the setup code that we need to make our program. Then we have this space we're gonna put our game loop in. So I've already written the code. I'm just gonna walk you through it. It's really simple and let's have a look. So up here, we've got our game state. This is the thing that our update function is gonna update. So in our case, we've got a R, G and a B value. This stands for red, green and blue. These are uh, eight bit integers. Then we've got a Boolean keys pressed. This is when we press a key, we're gonna see if the key is pressed, this will be true. If it's unpressed, this is gonna be false. Okay, and then we have our game state set here as a global. So let's look at step one, process input. So we don't need to, not, don't need to worry about the specifics of SDL here. Let's just have a look at what happens when we press a key. So SDL key down, this is the event. We're gonna mark this key as pressed. And then on a key up event, we're gonna mark the key pressed as false. That's basically it. Also, if we press the escape key, or sorry, this isn't pressing the escape key. If we click the little X at the top of the window, then we're gonna set this is running to false, which is this variable here, which we're gonna use in a second. Okay, so that's the input step, pretty straightforward. Now the update step. So we're gonna check if the escape key is pressed, we're gonna set is running to false, and then we're gonna return out of this update early. So we don't process anything else. We just finish the update and I'll explain what that means in a second. Now here, we've got our key pressed. We're gonna check if the E key is pressed in this case. And if it is, we're gonna increase the red value. And if the N key is pressed, we're gonna decrease the red value. That's it. So this is our update. Now, we've got the render. You don't need to worry about the details here, but suffice to say, we're taking the state and we're rendering a color to the screen. That's it. So if we wanna build out a really simple loop, well, we're going to need a while loop. So while is running. The reason we want to use a while loop is because we don't want this to end as long as the game is running. So that's what this is running is for. While we're running, we're going to call our three functions. Input, process input, uh, update, and render in order like this. And that's it. So why don't we have a look and see how it goes. So I'll just go over to the other tab here. I'll build this. Okay, we've got a main.exe file that's been built. Just gonna run that. And here it is. So, if I press E, we should get more of a red color. There we go, it's becoming brighter. And it should wrap around to black again because in C, unsigned integers always wrap. So that means it'll get to the maximum value, which is 255 for a 8-bit integer. And then it will go back to zero if you add one to it. So we're wrapping around to the to the black. And if we press N, we should go really bright and then go dimmer, dimmer, and then wrap around to really bright again. 
So as you can see, we've got our input, it's processing behind the scenes, doing some stuff, and then rendering the new state of the game to the screen so we can react to what's been happening. And now that you know how to make your own game loop, check out this video where you can see how to make a command buffer where you can delay execution between the steps.